Hi everyone, my name is Catherine. I make videos about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling. If that sounds like something you're into, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Today's tutorial is all about how to make this ice dyed onesie with a glue resist. I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions and list all the supplies for you guys. So without further ado, let's get started. So as usual, I'm going to list all the links for the supplies down in the description below. First, you're going to need a 100% cotton onesie. Then you're going to need blue Elmer's glue, which is washable. I used a disappearing marker for drawing the motif, drop cloths to keep everything tidy, a plastic tray for your ice dyeing, ice, about six to eight cups, depending on how big your item is, Procyon dye, I used brush steel by Dharma Trading, soda ash to prep the fabric for the dye, and Synthropol, also known as dyer's detergent. So I have pre-washed this onesie and prepped it for dyeing. You're always going to want to pre-wash everything. And I'm bringing my marker onto the onesie and I'm just sort of loosely sketching the motif that I want. I want to do kind of like a Queen Anne's lace type of flower and I'm just sort of blocking out the areas. This marker is going to disappear. I've used it for multiple glue resist projects and I have more videos on this process if you're interested in seeing more inspiration. I'll link them down in the description below for you. So before I move on, I would recommend putting a piece of plastic or cardboard in between the layers of your onesie so that the front does not stick to the back when you get the glue on it. I did not do the step first, and later in the video you'll see that I added it, but before you get started, I would recommend doing that. So once I get my pattern drawn, I'm going to come in with my washable blue glue and I'm going to start to trace over my lines and working with this glue is a little bit tricky I'd recommend doing it on a test swatch if you haven't ever worked with uh, this kind of glue because it is a little gloppy but you can get uh, the, a handle on it after a little practice so I'm just carefully putting down the glue and making sure that the lines are not running into each other. The glue spreads after you put it down, so I'm leaving enough space for the glue to spread and to dry. If you guys enjoy my tutorials here on YouTube, I would encourage you to go to my website, onyxartstudios.com, and sign up for my mailing list. I teach multiple online dyeing classes, and when you join my mailing list, you can get notified of new dates and coupon codes and sales. Also, I would encourage you to go and follow me on social media at Onyx Art Studios. I have all the information down in the description below. I'm just going to continue carefully filling in little blank spots and adding more glue to make sure I like the motif. Sometimes when I'm putting this glue down, uh, the line can separate so I just want to make sure that the line is solid and that there's no breaks and that there's also no big puddles of glue. So I just go slow and err on the side of less glue and adding glue than to put a big squirt of glue on the, on the fabric. Now I'm just going to add a few polka dots and soon I'll be done. Here it is totally drawn and I'm going to let it dry for about 24 hours. I actually added a little bit of cardboard inside and I did this after I painted with the paint um, with the glue but I would recommend doing it before. I just forgot um, but I think it's going to be okay because it's going to start to dry and it wasn't too stuck together when I put the cardboard in in between. So um, anyway just if you're gonna do this I would say put some cardboard in there before <laughs> but um, if you forget you can also put it in afterwards and it's not the end of the world so it's been drying for about 24 hours it's completely dry and I'm gonna put it in my plastic tray and add some ice 
I'm gonna add about six to eight cups of ice and um, I just make sure it's completely covered. You don't want to have too much ice, but you want to make sure that there's enough ice to cover the whole thing. These are my newish ice trays. They're silicone and they're really easy to use. I'd highly recommend them. I'll put the link down in the description below for them too. So now the ice is all set up and I'm going to come in and put some dye. I'm sprinkling brushed steel from Dharma Trading, which is a really nice color. I did another t-shirt with brushed steel and I'll put the video for that down in the description below for you too. It's just a really nice neutral color and it gives you beautiful splits. So now I'm going to come in with soda ash on top. This is going to help the dye to set and stick to the fabric. Here it is all set up. You can see uh, the soda ash and the dye starting to melt on the ice and I'm going to let it sit overnight. So here it is the next morning and it depends on the temperature of where you are. Uh, you want to make sure the ice is melting um, quite a lot and I started to kind of get concerned that the glue would come up off of the onesie so I wanted to check on it to see how it was looking. So I broke through the ice and I pulled it out just to kind of check on it. When I took it out, I liked the color that was on the onesie and I decided to just let the onesie continue to set on top of the ice. And um, I just wanted to give the glue a little bit of break from the soaking. So here it is out of the dye and you can see uh, the splotchiness of the ice dye has really come through and um, it looks like the glue has really lifted up but it's hard to know because with this technique um, the dye really gets stuck to the glue as well. The next thing I did was to rinse it with cold to get all the excess dye out and wash it with hot and Sinterpol. And then I let it soak in a bucket of cool water for another 24 hours just to lift up the glue and to get any excess dye out. You can do that as many times as you want until all the dye comes out. It's really important to just make sure that the glue comes up and the dye comes out before washing it and drying it because once you dry it, it sets it completely. So this is the finished product after soaking and washing and drying. You can see that the resist was not totally perfect, but I think that that is what makes this pattern so pretty. I'm really pleased with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out my social medias at Onyx Art Studio and to go to my website to check out my online dyeing classes. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It does wonders for my channel. And here are some more of my videos that you might enjoy. I have more ice dyeing and glue resist videos available on my channel, so be sure to check them out. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.